Hi, everybody. I'm Betsy Billhorn, and welcome to our second episode of Under the Forelock. And I am very excited to have Paolo Ramos join us. Um, Paolo has been studying breathwork really deeply for the last four years. He's gone to India, Romania, and Spain. Uh, he uh, studies with Dan Brule and has studied other methods as well. Um, I'm having Paolo come to the show. Um, I'm working with him on breath work to help me with writing. And it's just so amazing because as we were talking about this, I think there's a lot that Paolo can, uh, you know, tell the rest of us how to do breath work um, when we're working with our horses um, to reduce things like anxiety, uh, stress, you know, fear, but also to have a more harmonic relationship with a horse. So Paolo, welcome. And thank, thank you, you for, for having the show. Yeah, yeah. So can you start with, um, just tell me a little bit about your journey. You know, we chatted a little bit and you had mentioned you'd been yeah. a, a CEO of a company, right, for 15 years and that's pretty stressful. Um, but then you got into the breath work and now you're yeah. teaching breath work, right? So can yes. you talk a little bit about that? It started uh, in there. So uh, I was uh, managing director and CEO of a company for 15 years and uh, I was uh, really, uh, stressed guy. So uh, in the first 10 years, I was really stressed. People tend uh, to be uh, a little bit uh, impressed with my stress <laughs> because, <laughs> because I was uh, really uh, pushing people, but pushing myself and I was always getting on the results and, uh, and targets and goals. And, uh, and uh, I was the guy who was kicking stuff uh, and doing like, oh shit. <laughs> Things are not happening, and uh, and uh, one of one of one of days uh, I, I got in my mind that I should uh, try to release that stress somehow. So that's why I started to learn about a little bit meditation, mindfulness, and uh, and then reading about reading. Uh, and then when I when I got in situations that I was really in stress, I found that uh, I was screaming and so on, so with people and uh, and I found that I should call, do something, I should change something in my mind, so in my way of uh, behaving. So that's why I went to India. Uh, I went to India to learn about a little bit more about myself, okay? And uh, there I learned about nutrition, yoga, uh, meditation, breathing uh, practices. And then when I come back uh, to Portugal, uh, I discovered also that I had uh, a need of learning more how to breathe better, okay? Because uh, after getting away of four weeks or one month from India uh, to Portugal, again to, the, to our normal environment, People were saying, oh, you're so different, you're so this and so that. And I was really feeling more connected with my employees, okay? And my employees were looking a little bit scary at me <laughs> because they were not used to that. I was so connected and so calm and not reacting, you know? uh, But then uh, with the stress, I started to feel again the pressure, you know? Uh, and um, and I ended screaming with my son, eight years old, and he was crying to me. And I thought, I have to change this somehow. And uh, I was stressed, like, <sighs> and uh, and then I thought, man, uh, man, you have to breathe better. So you have to find a way of learning how to breathe better. So that's why I went to to meet Dan Brule. Dan Brule is so. Uh, worldwide uh, known uh, breast uh, worker or uh, he has a breast mastery course i entered in his course in his practitioner course and this, this is where i start to receive a relaxation in, uh, or learning relaxation through breathing okay uh, and that's changed my life really completely because uh, all of a sudden by doing breast work i was letting me opening to people and being more connected but especially being more connected with myself you know so uh, i was getting in the flow because i was doing it every day i'm practicing breast work for the last four years now uh, every day and it completely changed my my perception my way of seeing people and people say to me the same so they get I get now more connection with my sons, uh, my, more connection with my ex-wife because I divorced because I was so stressed. I was pushing her so much 
uh, then I thought that uh, maybe this is wrong. So I have to get off marriage, you know? So, uh, and, um, and being now more connected, it gives me a, a better way of uh, communicating with people also. So, uh, and that, that feels, uh, people feel that. And uh, that's better for you, for your results in your business. It's better for your connection with your suppliers, with your customers, with your employees, with your family, with your sons, with your dog, and with your horses, of course. <laughs> yeah, because you mentioned uh, there's a lot of what you were talking about in your life, like coming to this breathing practice and what it did for yeah. you. Um, I key in on a lot of things that I think riders, we talk about a lot, right? You know, we want to have connection with our horse, right? Or, or we come in and we're, we're not breathing, right? Or we're breathing really fast because we're anxious. Yeah. And, and then we get frustrated, right? And then I think the horse is confused um, because sometimes we come in and we're happy and we relax and other times we're just like, yes. right? And so then you think, okay, I'm stressed out or I have a bad day with my horse and, and the same thing. Well, forget it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to ride anymore, you know? So there's this kind of, and, and, and we also talk about being centered, right? You'll hear a lot of trainers or a lot of clinicians talk about being very grounded or being very centered and that the horse mirrors back exactly what's going on with you, right? The horse exactly. doesn't lie. So I could be like smiling like this and inside my heart's pounding and I'm holding my breath, right? Like that, yeah. Physically, and he feels that and he reacts to that. So um, so one of the things that I, I kind of wanted to throw out there, and I know you've done a little research on horses when we talked about it as well when yes. you started talking with me, but there were some fun facts that I don't know if people really realize. So um, one of the things that I saw was uh, there was a study that was done by Dr. Deb Bennett, but she had mentioned that um, horses' um, resting respiration rate is about, um, you know, 10 to 24 breaths a minute, and people's resting respiration rates are about the same, right? So maybe 12 to 16 exactly. breaths. Yeah. So, um, so can you talk a little bit about maybe harmonizing, like how do we harmonize Okay. Are resting breathing rates together, right? Because that creates connection, and or, or yeah. like, what is the theory behind that? When you say you create connection with other people yes. and you're breathing, I think I think that uh, when you when you when we see air in the air, we breathe air, and uh, we don't give the important important uh, we don't give the um, uh, the meaning of it. So uh, when you're breathing air, you're breathing energy. Okay. And uh, when you're breathing in a, in a relaxation mode, okay, when you are in the zone, as we say, uh, the other people feel that energy, okay? And uh, the horses and the animals, uh, they feel also that energy, okay? So when you calm down your body language, okay, your energy in your body, when you come down with your relaxation, uh, breathing slower, your heartbeat slows also, okay? Because your breathing is controlling your mind and your heart, okay? It's mm -hmm. not your heart that controls your mind or your breathing, it's your breathing. So your heart is like a tool and your breathing is controlling your heart. So if you breathe fast, your heart beats fast, okay? If you breathe slow, your heart beats slow also, okay? So, and animals feel that, people feel that, okay? When you are in a, a business meeting, if you, you can look at people and if you study behavior or non-verbal behavior, you see which people are stressed, which people are calm, and you tend to be more empathy with the people that are more calm, of course, okay? And the uh, horses are not different from that. So, because they feel our feel our energy, okay? I don't want to be too much woo here, but uh, they feel our energy because if you don't understand energy, just feel our uh, our body behavior, okay, our body language. So, uh, and when you are in a horse, and if you are calm, okay, and if you are breathing the same as the horse, if the horse is breathing fast, if you low, low your breathing, the horse will tend to connect with you and lower his breathing also. So uh, that's, that's the way we can somehow uh, connect with the uh, people with your breathing and breathing this type of uh, connection yeah 
in that in that way yeah so so let's talk about a scenario that i think is really common for a lot of people going to the barn right so many of us probably go in the evenings or the weekends and we've got a lot going on from work or you know our day and when we come in the barn and you can see i'm like that's right you know i'm like oh i gotta ride and you know maybe i only have an hour and a half and my breathing rate even you can see in my body language right i'm up like this so, so what is the techniques that we can use maybe in the car or actually in the barn, like before we go to the horse, right? So they're not catching that, that kind of frenetic energy that, that works, right? You know, when we walk in and the horse is like, oh, you're nice and calm. So do you have a couple of things, suggestions yes, for how to do that, yeah. Yes, I have it. There's some things that are uh, normal instinct. We do it by instinct, okay? So uh, normally when you are in a stress situation or an anxiety situation, like an exam, for example, okay? or a, a big meeting, important meeting, you are in the end of the meeting, you are relieved. So what you do is like, ah, thank God the meeting is over, okay? So in the, when you are in a stress situation, uh, like this coronavirus we are living, okay? When, uh, when the coronavirus will go on, we will say, thank God, no more corona in our life. So we're going out. Ah, thank God, freedom, yes? So. Uh, and if you do this side of relief uh, by voluntarily, okay, you can act like doing like this in your in your uh, press, uh, in your way of uh, dealing with this. If, if you are stressed, okay, in a situation you are stressed nearby your horse, okay, and if you do this side of relief, okay, this side of relief will will somehow make a connection with your lizard uh, brain, okay, and tell you that in when you are in stress. And if you do the side of relief, okay, your brain will react like this. Oh, uh, this is maybe this is not such a stress situation. So you are in control. Okay, so if when you do the side of relief, you are telling your brain that everything is okay. So, and you are doing it like in the stress situation. So if it's in stress situation, if you are doing the side of relief, ah, thank God I'm good, or this is good stuff, or, uh, well, everything is fine, okay? So if you do this, you, you tell to your nervous system that everything is fine, so, and, the, uh, and your nervous system would tell you, okay, it's not a stress situation, so maybe it's okay, he's, on, he's in control, okay? So mm -hmm. because our stress mode, our fight or flight mode, when we are in stress, when we're at our high cortisol levels, what tends to happen is that you're, you, are in a, you are not in control, okay? You are in survival mode, okay? So when we are worried with something, we are in survival mode. And when you do the side of relief like this, I like to make this, <laughs> okay? What you do is that you automatically enter in the uh, relaxation mode, in the presympathetic. So you have like, like, you know, we have the sympathetic uh, mode and on the, our central nervous system, sympathetic mode, the autonomy in the nervous system, sympathetic and parasympathetic, okay? And when you are in stress, you are in sympathetic, okay? On a fight or fight, fly, a flight or fight mode, okay? And when you are in relaxation and parasympathetic, you are uh, controlling, okay? You are in control, you are in relaxing, you are not in the stress mode. So when you do this in situations like that, you told me, uh, the side of relief is a fantastic uh, tool that you can use instantly so you can be more calm. So you, you, you are in stress and you do, and you think in the good things. So, uh, and the, your body changes completely. So your chemistry changes like, like instant, so instantly, okay? So that's something, that's a great exercise. I use it a lot. <laughs> I use it a lot, not at the barn. But I mean, it, it's, it sounds like it's a great exercise. One, I'm in the car, right? I'm just getting in the barn. I'm going to let the day go. But also I'm hearing that it could be something where maybe I'm stressed out, like I'm at a show and I'm about to, I'm about to mount my horse and go, you know, do my dressage test or go jump my round oh. or whatever. Just like, ah, oh, right there at the mounting block. Yes. Or, I was doing that. Yeah. I was doing that before this interview because normally, you know, I'm Portuguese, so I tend to have difficulties in English. And I was always in, and my, our brain, our lizard brain, it starts, it feels my uh, worry and starts to get somehow to have survival. Okay, uh, how can I do it? Oh, blah, 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 blah. And now your brain started, to, 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 
And when you do the side of relief, I, I was doing like three, four times before doing this interview with you, and I felt more calm instantly. So uh, you can do it in, in that. If you do it that in these situations, it will be it's it's life changing. You, you you will be mind blowing for you because you feel the the changes. Completely. Oh yeah, yeah. I do it. I do it a lot, and it's and I can just say to anybody who's watching this, it's instantaneous. And that cue when you do this. Yeah. It's yeah. gotten to the point where sometimes I just do this and I, I don't have to make, you know, when I first started, like I had relief. to make myself like, oh, right. Like, okay, I'm going to do this and say it out loud. Yeah. And now I'm kind of like this. And like it's hypnosis. Yeah. Hypnosis. Just, you, you, yeah. You already, when you do this and you do the side of it, you know that you, light is your calm already. Okay. So it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so the other thing um, I, you know, I'm interested in is, you and I have talked about before um, that there, you know, there's kind of some body cues, right? And, and also when we're stressed out, we tend to hold our breath or we'll breathe very rapidly. Yeah. Um, and that creates uh, stiffness in the body, right? So, yeah. you know, that, and where does that usually happen? Um, you know, and I think these are problems for writers a lot, right? The shoulders, you had talked about your shoulders yeah. rise up and then your back gets stiff and you know, um, and those are really not, not good things when you're writing. So again, now maybe I can't do the sigh of relief <laughs> while I'm riding my horse, uh, you know, especially if I'm in, you know, in the middle of a competition type thing, or maybe I'm in a, you know, a pretty stressful lesson with a, a high-end trainer. So do you have any other kind of techniques yes. to yes. relax the body? Yeah, especially well, one, in the saddle. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that uh, we normally do it's non-functional breathing, okay? We breathe from your shoulders, we, in, we breathe, I'm going to take this, we breathe from our chest, okay? And uh, we tend to breathe like this, okay? And they tend to move the shoulders and the shoulders are not uh, breathing muscles, okay? They are secondary breathing muscles, okay? So you shouldn't use them. That's why normally we feel so, so much tension in our shoulders, in our back, okay? And uh, the way, the way you breathe, the horse is filled, okay? So when you tend to have a, a deeper breathing, okay? When you control uh, your breathing through your belly, okay? So you are, you don't see my belly, but there, yeah, but uh, maybe, maybe if, you, if you have um, a belly breathing, okay? Or using your diaphragm, okay? You are using also a much more uh, percentage of your lung capacity. So when you're uh, a chest breather, you just use like 20% of your uh, breathing capacity and you are in a uh, stress mode, okay? So you are activating. When you are scared, what you do, when you're stressed, you do the, you tend to hold your breath like the, okay? And you hold your breath. So when you hold your breath, uh, the horse uh, feels it, okay? Because you are acting on your survival mode. Okay, so when you tend to breathe to your, from your belly, from using your diaphragm, you are using our uh, digest uh, organs and digest muscles and relaxation. So if you are breathing from your belly, you are giving more calm to you, okay? You are breathing more gently and you are, you are activating the parasympathetic system, okay? So if you, if you are in a horse, okay, and if you are breathing from your belly, the horse will feel it, okay? Because when you are breathing for your belly, you are breathing for your back, okay? And you are using your, uh, your pre your costals, your intercostals and extra, uh, external costals, okay? And you are using all your physiology to be more centered in the horse, okay? And you will feel it, uh, they feel it, okay? So that's the way of having relax, relaxation shoulders, okay? And being centered using belly breathing so you can have more back uh, strength, uh, more uh, back, uh, how can I tell, uh, more uh, to be more centered, okay? Right, uh, and, but relax at the same time because one of the exactly. things is I'm watching your body language as you do this and, and, and you know, when we're stressed and we start breathing really fast, you were like literally like not only were you coming from your shoulders, but you're curling over. Exactly. Yeah, that's one thing that a trainer would be like, sit up, sit up, right? So, you know, your breathing really without thinking about it can really affect your position in the saddle, right? So when I'm breathing from my belly, right, I'm, I'm sitting in that nice position that we like but in a in a very kind of relaxed way um and you exactly. automatically kind of move back so for people who are not 
um, studying breathing, maybe it's the first time. So what kind of exercises would I do to practice belly breathing? Because that's not something maybe that I want to start doing while I'm writing, but okay. I think that's something we could do at home, right? Because that's just, that's something yeah, we you, do. You, you, yeah. normal, normally in a home, you can, you can separate. As seated, it's not it's so easy to do it, but uh, mm -hmm. you can separate your breathing, your chest breathing from your belly breathing. You, you just pick a book, okay? Like this, like this book. Uh, it can be a heavier book, okay? Uh, you, you lie down, okay? And you, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to somehow to, so you can see it, okay? And you are lying down and you breathe like this, okay? You breathe like this with your belly. Inhale and exhale. And you can really feel that book move up, yes. up and down. That's why you know if you're doing you, it correctly. If you do it lie down, okay? I cannot lie down here, but yeah. if you do it lie down, you will for sure train your diaphragm and you can do it by a hand in your, in your chest, okay? And the, the book or the weight in your, in your belly, okay? And you can do it both, okay? You can do it like this, I'm going to show you. You can breathe from your belly and then from the chest, okay? You can so from if, I, if, I, and if I'm keeping practicing that every day, then it tends to end up being second nature that I'm breathing from my belly more than I'm breathing yes. from my chest, right? Yes. So, so it's not exactly. something again when I'm writing. I'm like, okay, breathe from my belly now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because because when you practice, naturally. yeah, you, when you have some, this is like life. Okay, so when you do something consistently and you with a certain discipline, you tend to train it on a day-by-day -day basis. It's like driving, you know, uh, you will do it uh, for by instinct, okay? So uh, if you start to learn how to breathe better uh, or to center more your breathing, okay? Every day you will learn for sure and do it automatically without thinking. So in, in a horse, when you, you, when you are centered, you will, you will uh, be in a horse and breathing from your belly, okay? You will be, it's like, it's like breaking. You are feeling your belly, okay? And you are centered in your horse. And I, and I think that when you, uh, there are some movements that you can do with your horse and breathing also. So when you breathe in and you feel your belly, you are like slowing down. And when you breathe out, you are like going forward, okay? So, uh, and the horse also communicates through that uh, position. I'm not, maybe you can answer that because uh, I'm not so much on horses, but. Uh, yeah, so there's, so there's a thing that they talk about, um, which is, it's called the combined effect. Um, and they talk about this I, more in dressage, but you know, I'm up, right, and then, and I'm taller, and then that the horse, you know, the, 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 it's more collected, and the rhythm is slower, but there's still the energy there, right, and I come taller and taller. So when we're, when we're walking, right, the horse is going to slow down and slow down. And, and, you know, depending on how much I do the combined effect, right, um, I've seen people do it on a single and the horse stop, right, yes. you know. Uh, so, yeah, so that breathing is actually really important. And then, of course, it's important that we don't, you know, hold it. <laughs> we're having another problem. We're yeah, like this, right. We are, but as, we yeah, this but as, as we lean, as we, you know, breathing up and leaning back, right, that the horse becomes a little more collected and, and coming up this way. But then as we're releasing the breath or we're coming forward, then the horse is going to move a little bit forward. And I'm not talking about the forward, like I'm in the fetal position, yeah. but, you know, that we're opening and we're moving a little forward. So yeah, so that, you know, just, and I've watched, you know, very master trainers, just you it's just by their breath, right? Where you can then see the horse kind of, you know, following that energy really. And it is about raising, because we also talked about that breath is raising the energy, right? Or yes. letting the energy out, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's also important from a harmonization perspective, as you talked about earlier, right? We're breathing in exactly. energy in and out that the horse will attempt to harmonize too, right? Yes. So, yeah. So a couple of things too, I wanted to point out. Um, and again, I'm, I'm going to attribute this to Dr. Deb Bennett. Um, she wrote really kind of some very interesting articles. But when a horse is stressed out or anxious, right, um, a lot like people, right, they, and they hold their breath when they freak yeah. out or they start breathing really fast or hyperventilating, um, you know, and she had also made the comment that uh, a, a very old uh, trainer that she had worked with, um, you know, had said that basically when the horse is 100% with you and, and, and calm, right, and they're, they're happy with their situation, you're not hearing breathing. 
And I think that's true with people, but can you kind of talk about that a little bit and, and, you know, some of our breath responses, but also with the horse and how do we, you know, I mean, you've worked with a lot more with people, yes. but when you have an anxious or stressed out employee and they're breathing really fast or they're up and holding their breath, like what, what do you do around them to harmonize them, to get them down? Right. So like, you know, maybe we're talking it's about the, people, it, but it's the same with yes. the horse, right? <clears throat> It's it's a little bit what I was told what I told already in the beginning. It's uh, yeah. when you have someone stressed, uh, you see you see you can be the profiler of breath. Okay, if you start to look at people, okay, if you start to look at people, how do people breathe? Like if they are breathing from their mouth, they are, if they are breathing shallow, uh, like or if they are breathing calm, or if you don't see them breathing, not nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because there are people that they, they, you look at them, you, you don't feel their breathing, okay? So, and that's the most calm people, you know, okay? Because uh, people tend to learn that uh, having a big breath, it's like, <gasps> uh, and it has to be so uh, audible. And, uh, but no, uh, if there is, uh, there is some philosophies in breathing, it's like potato school, okay? That it tells us that the, the masters, the Shaolin masters, they, you don't hear them breathing. Okay, so uh, so when you don't hear people uh, breath, okay, it's a good it's a good sign because it's a sign that you are letting your CO2 uh, uh, running in your body and you have enough CO2 so that you can absorb oxygen in your body. Okay, so if you are uh, a slow breather, okay. Uh, and not like a fast breather or a, a very deep breather, okay? Uh, if you are a slow breather, uh, if you don't feel people, uh, now I'm talking with you, I don't feel you so much breathing, okay? You are now learning better how to breathe. But if you are not like, yeah, if you are not, uh, if you are a slow breather, just to tell this, uh, you get the idea that person is more calm, okay? So, and the, uh, and the, uh, the connection you make when someone in stress or the some or the horse is in stress, if you come down your breathing, the you tend to we tend to think that we have to control everything. Okay, we tend to think that when when we have someone in stress, we have to change the person attitude. Okay, but no, you can change everything outside if you change you or inside. Okay, so if you tend to be more calm. It's like hypnosis, works like that. I study hypnosis for, I think, three months, okay? And I, I'm a very difficult pe person to be to, not hypnotized, okay? I was hypnotized, I was, Richard Bandler is the father of NLP, he tried to hypnotize me, and he couldn't, okay? But, uh, but uh, uh, not because, uh, so I'm running away from the, the, the issue. The, the issue is, uh, if you try to change your uh, breathing, if you're getting your breathing slower, your heartbeat goes slower, nobody can be stressed uh, in front of you, okay? If you have someone shouting with you, and if you are calm, the person tends to be calm. After this shouting, you will tend to be calm because you cannot be aggressive with a person that is not being aggressive with you. And, uh, and also it's like, I think, no, I'm talking more about animals. Animals, they, they are more on connection. They feel more the, the feelings and the emotions than we do, okay? Uh, I have three animals in my house. I have two cats and one dog, okay? And they feel really when we are more calm, they get near. And when we are stressed, they, they get away. Because the animals, they need to be secure, okay? And the horses are, are, are big animals. And they tend to, they, they have this need of the comfort of being secure. If they feel alert by somehow, uh, or seeing other horse or seeing other thing, or even having a person nearby them that is stressed, or it's pretending it's calm, but it's stressed, they feel it. Animals feel it. So I, I was never, uh, I never had a dog biting me because even big dogs, because I'm always calm in a, with a big dog. And if you see a person passing and he's have scared of dogs, they will feel it, okay? So animals have this connection with your energy that you cannot see it, okay? And they don't feel such a behavior, but they feel more your energy, your, your, uh, your, 
your uh, energy field. Okay, so uh, and if you get your, if you low your uh, your uh, breathing, you will increase your energy field and it will give them more comfort. Okay, it's like uh, I give an example, an analogy is good in breathing. It's breathing awareness. It's when you enter in the jungle and you sit and the animals come. Okay, you don't, uh, they don't run away. Okay, so. You need to have this uh, like uh, type of uh, uh, connection with the animal, with the, with the horse. So uh, we uh, it depends on type of uh, things you are doing in the horse. But if you are a beginner, or if you want, uh, if you want to get acquainted with the horse, you you have to be calm. You have to, you will feel if you are stressed or not. So and he needs to be secure. And the best person to be with or uh, nearby mm -hmm. is someone that is connected with himself okay and and the animals love that so uh, and i think that everyone loves that even my if you are in a relationship with your wife or with your husband okay they feel that so they because the, uh, this is not a male thing but the, the women tend to be uh, more uh, a better relationship with men Okay, that are more not bossy, but more in control with themselves. Okay, more connected with themselves. Okay, and they, they, uh, men and women tend to be more secure when they are, well, when they are with this type of people or connecting with this type of people. So, I don't know if I answer that talk a lot. So I don't. Know if yeah, I yeah, no, no. I, I think, it, I think it did answer that. And you know, kind of just to, to play back is that, right you if you're calming in yourself right if i'm if i'm winding down at some point the horse is gonna wind down and and say oh well she's not right but i think the important thing to know is to your point is you can't control it right so it's not this thing where i'm sitting there going i'm gonna relax and you have to relax because i'm relaxed right and you know so so it may take some time right and i think yeah, but really, probably, really yeah. do it automatically you can you can if you do like if you do like a, a very single, uh, simple exercise, is to, to you can do the side of leaf we talked about, okay, already, and we can do also other thing that I can talk about here. It's yawning, okay, but uh, but if, if you do like this, just breathe in uh, like four times, okay, and breathe out, exhale uh, the double, okay. It's one two technique, okay. If you do this, you instantly uh, your heartbeat goes down. And you relax. You don't say to yourself, "I need to relax. I need to relax. I relax," because you was being stressed. Okay, so you you give an order. Your breathing gives an order to your mind and to your heart, and you will automatically, even if you don't want, you will automatically be calmer. Okay, so this is the way. If you breathe uh, slower and breathe gentle with yourself, okay, uh, you will automatically enter in a, in a parasympathetic zone. So. It's automatic, so you don't need to be pressure on it. So the just to, to play that back so people understand the instructions. So I would breathe in two counts and then breathe out four counts, right? When you talk yeah, about like the this. double. You can, you can yeah. breathe in and breathe out. I'm going to move from the mouth so you can hear it. It's like breathe in, breathe out. So it's double the exhale. When you double, when you start to do the exhale, you are starting the carbon dioxide to grow in your body, and you let the oxygen enter in your cells because the it's the carbon, the CO2 uh, will able the oxygen to enter in your cells, in your tissues, in your body, in your blood. Okay, and the oxygen, what it will do? It will give you signs of relaxation. Okay, and the this is what oxygen do for you. This is the kind of energy. If you are if you are voluntarily doing it and using your belly and with a uh, with a small a slow breathing, you are automatically in, with the exhale doubling the exhale. It's automatic. So you you will uh, be more calm for sure. So any you you will be more calm, and the animal will be more calm for sure also. So they'll start to they'll start to wind down. Yes. Um, on that. Yeah, and I, 
I think what's also interesting too, because I've, I've taken some lessons with some trainers and clinicians and they, they talk about the, the, the yawning or the, ah, oh, you know, so I, I was uh, taking uh, some clinics with, uh, with a guy and he would, you know, he would say, oh, you know, just right. Ah, oh, just like, oh, we're fine. You know, the horse would be like going nuts. And, oh, it's okay. Right. It's okay. You know, and he would tell the person to do that, not the horse. Right. And, and, you know, over, you know, some period of time, right. In 30 seconds or so, the horse would finally, you know, calm down. But I think, I think you're right is that, you know, and watching this, right. As an auditor, uh, you know, if the person isn't calming, it's kind of that, that, uh, that upward spiral of anxiety, right. Because yeah. I'm, I'm anxious and then the horse is getting, well, she's anxious. Right. So I have even more to be anxious about, right. Versus coming down the other way. Um, and then the other thing that I've had happen, and I'm curious if you'd recommend this is, you know, I usually take about a minute or so, you know, I'm walking out to the arena and I can usually tell with my horse, right. Cause she might, her head might be up or, you know, she's not breathing. Um, she's a lot like her mom, <laughs> and, uh, but we'll do, we'll do like 30 seconds to a minute of breathing. And I will notice that she will actually start to harmonize or, or no. we'll start to harmonize to each other. Um, but I think the effect is, is the opposite because I know I've gotten into this trap where she will stop breathing, right. Or she'll go up and hold her breath, right. Or she'll start to, you know, breathe start faster right because she's anxious about something you know maybe there's something yeah. outside that she sees but i i will end up catching myself why am i anxious all of a sudden because i was fine so it also goes the other way but like do you have again you're dealing with people more but when you have that person that maybe is not um outwardly really stressed right they're not like this right it's kind of what we were talking about before where i'm smiling but you know, are you receiving that like feel from that person, you know, like where all of a sudden you're feeling kind of tense or you're not breathing properly? And like, how do you catch that? You know, I know the exercise is to get out of it, but what are some things that we could notice in our body that, you know, we're beginning to catch on to somebody else's maybe anxious breathing or the horse's anxious breathing, if that makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, it makes sense. If you can see it easily if you are breathing from your mouth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you are like moving your shoulder, if, you, if, the, if the animal, normally the animals, they always have, uh, when they are relaxing, they always have a, a diaphragm breathing, belly breathing. Mm, okay? mm -hmm. You see the babies, uh, you see the cats, you see the dogs, and you, even the horses, when they are relaxed, they are, don't having, they are not having uh, shallow breathing. Okay? They are breathing deeply. Okay? And this is, means that they are calm. Okay? If you see there. If you see the belly, uh, I don't know if it tells belly of the horse, but if you see the belly of the horse breathing, it tends to be, it's calm, okay? But if you, if you tend to breathe more from his mouth, and if you see the air uh, in his area of the throat and the, on, the, on the neck of the horse, and you know the behavior of the non-behavioral, uh, non how do you say it, uh, non-verbal behavior of the horse, there are studies on that. You know that much better than me. So you, you can feel that. Okay. So uh, you were asking, uh, how could I know that? So I, I know that through the breathing. Okay. If people are breathing like that. Okay. And if the horse is like, so it's it's uh, it's uh, uh, you will feel that he's stressed. Okay. So um, that's uh, I think I think it's all about uh, relaxation. Okay, so I think it's all, I was talking about yawning. If you look at a horse, the horses yawn a lot, okay? I've seen a lot, if you go to put yawning, horses yawning on the Google, it's crazy. You see such lovely pictures of videos and oh, they stretch the, because uh, I don't know so much about horses, but I know that when we have, uh, when we do yawn, okay? And the yawning, it's a little bit in society, it's ma uh, misunderstood, okay? So we say that, we say that if I started to yawn now with you, you say, I've always bored, okay? But no, it's, yawning is much more about empathy and connection than uh, any other thing, okay? So if you, if you don't yawn, it's, I think that uh, my master says that, uh, Dan Boulay says that, uh, y uh, the shower is for your body and yawning is for your energy, okay? So, uh, and if you don't let your, let your body yawn, okay, 
because animals do it in situ. They are when the animals doing it, they don't worry if you are looking at it and say, "Oh shit, okay, sorry." <laughs> but they will not. They will not say to you, "Oh, why are you doing that? Are you bored with me or something?" So they yawn because they need to stretch. They need to release the tension. Okay, and if they are with you. And they, first, they, got, they are getting stressed and they say, okay, she, she doesn't have the fall. And they do it by, by automatically. They started to yawn, okay? And the horses, I've seen that in videos, they do it a lot, okay? And it's not because they have a problem in their health, okay? It's because they need to release that tension, okay? And, um, and when you do the, in, and people are a little bit like this because we are always holding our breath. We are always uh, holding our breath here, okay? And that's why we feel stressed and we feel stuck. And when we need to yawn, we don't do it because it's not, uh, so socially speaking, it's not, uh, it's not uh, well, uh, um, how accepted. do you say it? Yeah, well, socially uh, acceptable, yeah, yeah. What you do, you restrain your yawn, okay? And you restrain it, restrain it, restrain it again. And you're always restraining your own energy. And what, Yawn tells you is that it's your inside energy. You are connecting with your inside energy. And if you do that, when you want to do that, you should do. You should do yawn 10 times per day, okay? So to release that tension. And if you are, if you are somehow stuck in your uh, wheel of yawning, okay? Uh, how can you be yourself in life, okay? If you are uh, just not releasing yourself, what your feelings, your emotions, you are blocking it inside of you because you don't want to yawn because people will not accept it, okay? We learn this from since kids to block our emotions, okay? And if you start somehow to change that attitude to, toward you, yourself, you start to release these emotions, release these blockages just by, uh, you know, let it go, okay? And you are letting go. I am doing this in the video. And, uh, uh, and I should, because I need it. So uh, and when you allow this to, to, to do that to yourself, it's like giving a, a, a sign of love to yourself, okay? Uh, and you are, you are ready, okay, to be connecting with people because you are ready to be yourself, okay? And you are, uh, and this is the way that people get in connection with you because when you, when you feel in your own energy, and you, when you feel yourself doing yawnings in your home, even alone, you're outside and you feel that energy. Sometimes uh, you are actors like Will Smith. You know Will Smith? Actors that everyone that uh, get along with Will Smith, they say that when he enters in the room, they feel their energy. It's energy, okay? And uh, I'm sure he's yawning a lot in, in his home. So, <laughs> because it, that charisma, it's self-confidence, okay? When you have self-confidence, not because you are rich or not because, but because you are self-centered, you are in connect connection with yourself, okay? That energy, everyone felt that energy, feels that energy. And animals feel that energy and everyone wants to be nearby you. So, and, uh, so my recommendation is yawn, yawn a lot. Yawn, <laughs> so yawn, can, and yawn. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question because a, a lot of what I have had recommended in the past is a technique like box breathing, Ray, um, you know, uh, it, I think that's very popular. There was a, yeah. a technique that was uh, tactical, a Navy SEALs type, tactical, tie, tactical <laughs> breathing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's especially, you know, it was, uh, um, you know, especially when uh, I'm just going to say when the shit's going down, right? So yeah. you're, you're outside. I use this a lot when I was first um, hacking out and, and riding outside with my horse. It was new for her and occasionally run into a turkey or something, right? And, you know, so, um, and then, you know, it's very, right. And you know, I got to get out of here. So, you know, I can't really go, oh, like this while I'm, while I'm riding because I'm more concerned about falling off. Um, but what do you think about like a box breathing or those kind of tactical breathing techniques? Like, like when a serious, like I said, when a serious, shit is going down and i yeah. don't have you know and i'm like oh my god right because the horse is you know whatever so what would you uh, recommend uh, there the, man, the, the mentor for that uh, technique is i think his name is mark divine yeah. uh, you can you can google him so he's the, the boss of box breeding we call it also square breeding or tactical breeding 
but uh, this is very good so you can be centered i use it a lot when i'm driving and i'm with sleep i tend to sleep when i'm driving okay uh, especially when i'm uh, driving a lot like 800 kilometers or 1000 kilometers i tend to sleep i was in brazil last year in may and brazil the roads are not so good and you you do 200 kilometers it's like you are doing 500 okay and uh, and you you get tired because it's the roads are really messy and um it's a lovely country it's a fantastic country but the roads are not so good okay and uh you tend to be uh, and animals are outside they have horses they have everything so the uh, you can uh, have a horse in the middle of the road okay so what happens is when you do the the, the box breathing and it's called tactical breathing for some reason okay you somehow put your like in balance and in focus okay so with the box breathing uh, i don't know if people know what is it so a box breathing is a, you inhale and you hold you exhale and you hold okay so it's like four times you inhale like uh, like two like inhale two three four uh, four ex uh, hold two three four uh, exhale uh, two three four and hold two three four so if you do like that if you do that for one minute or two minutes you'll be really in focus so uh, and uh, it's anti-stress because uh, your mind cannot be in a situation when you do box breathing you are getting a, a breathing that you have to focus in your breathing so you don't hear a little more about your mind telling you what to do okay so you are centered and uh, and this this technique is very good so you can not be in panic and being in a, in a real focusing position okay to be in control and this is why navy seals do it because there are bombs everywhere people dying and they have to be uh, they are in straight with a mission okay and uh, they are in control so this is why if you are in a horse maybe you want to be in control it's not i i found from other uh, riders that it's not easy to to uh, hold your breath when you are <laughs> when you are in a horse of course but yeah it will be a fantastic uh, technique for using while uh, if you are getting if you are feeling that you are getting out of control or the horse is getting out of control maybe uh, it's a good technique to do it yeah so you cannot stress with it so yeah, I find it to be a handy technique. Um, so as we're leaving the driveway, right, and I, I, I do it just a little bit before anything major is going to go on, right? So, you know, I mentioned the turkey, you know, pretty much if she sees the turkey and the mind has left the building and we're, right, you know, at that point, I'm just worried about not falling off. I mean, I am breathing and I'm trying to, you know, I, I will say it's a little bit of a struggle and you're right, I'm not going to sit there and go, as we're like, the yes. question was fantastic because you, because you read my mind before doing this video also because uh, i made my my uh, career is breathing in the morning as you know and uh, before doing this video i was doing the last things i was doing it was the the side of leaf but before i'm 10 minutes before i was doing my career is breathing and then i do the three minutes of box breathing okay because i was going to a stress situation okay and then <laughs> And I don't know if you notice, but I'm not stressed. So uh, I'm, right. I'm, I'm very easy. So, uh, so it works. <laughs> oh yeah, no, 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 it totally does work. And, and I, so I, I think, you know, to, to summarize, so uh, as we've been talking, right? So there's the, there's just the, oh, the sigh of relief, right? I'm coming sigh to the barn. Room. I'm just trying to get rid of the day or I have a lot of things going on in my mind. I can just do that in the car, do that in the tack room before I'm even engaging with a horse. So I'm kind of, right, I'm just letting that all go. But then there's the yawning, right? We just yawn to, to let yeah. that energy out, right? And kind of, right, stretch. and then the di stretch. And stretch, stretch out, yeah. Stretch. And then the diaphragm breathing, right? So that's really important as we're riding, it keeps to relaxation in the body, recenter. Um, and then we use the box breathing, right? I can see not only just you know, the situation that I am, but I could see, hey, I'm getting ready to go do my jump round or I'm about to do a, you know, a cross country course or whatever, right? Which are both 
kind of stressful situations. We've got a lot going on, but I want to be hyper focused. Um, maybe not in a relaxation in state, right? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, those are all um, really, really good uh, techniques. Um, and I think it's important for people to, you know, to really kind of watch what's going on with a horse. Cause one of the things that I noticed really wasn't paying too much attention to her breathing, you know, a while back. Um, but then when I spent that minute or so really to check in and see how she's breathing, you know, and adjust that I was a minute well spent, you know, it actually in some cases made the difference between a, a, a really good ride and what could have been a horrible ride. Right. You know, uh, just, just, you know, but, I, but the other thing that you were talking about that I, I think that sometimes we miss, um, probably just as people, but also as writers, is um, this, uh, this, this thing of having calm energy, right? And people want to be attracted to you. And, you know, and you talked about Will Smith. And I think we can all name people that, you know, we're instantly around them and we feel better. We feel more confident, right? We just feel good. I think from, from a writing perspective from people, you know, and you'd mentioned beginners, but I think it's true for advanced writers as well. Like the more connection and leadership that you have where the horse feels good around you. Right. And, and that brings up trust and, and, and confidence. And I think it's a better, 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 sure. you know, it's a better relationship makes better performance. Right. So if I am yeah. competitive and I do want to perform better, right. This breathing is just a really great way uh, to do that, right? You exactly. Know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. So, uh, because if you need, if you somehow want to learn how to be more connected with others, okay, outside, you have to connect with yourself inside. So uh, you have to practice. It's not like uh, the magic pill, you know. And people tend to they. I know that we are in 21st century. Uh, and we are on digital area uh, era, but uh, the real thing is that um, you need to have time for you. And uh, it's not just going to the gym to work out outside. You have to work inner out. Okay, so uh, not out in, <laughs> but inner <laughs> out. And uh, and uh, somehow uh, I think that breathing is the way of uh, opening the bridge. Okay so that uh, or opening the bridge so that you can be more connected with yourself and if you are uh, good with yourself uh, magic happens okay so uh, because you are good, people tend to be attracted to you and it's like breathing also opens the door like uh, if you are self confident okay you are more fo more focused in what you what you want in life because you know already what what you are okay it's your essence. You know already, if you are more every day by day basis, you are connecting more with yourself through breathing. Because if you breathe for one week or two weeks, it's cool. It will, you will feel fine, but you will not have medium long results, okay? And then you will not create. So it's not, there is not, people want to say, ah, but which, how many layers do I have to climb to go to the connection uh, zone, okay? And there's no letters, it's life, you know? So um, you are uh, uh, developing, uh, evolu evolving, evol uh, evolving, evolving, uh, evolving, yeah. yeah. So you are, that's evolution, okay? So, uh, and with breathing is the same. So when you breathe every day, independently of uh, which type of uh, methods or techniques you use, you are breathing, you are, breathing is energy. It's energy, I believe that it's like energy of love. So you are breathing love and you're getting love outside, okay? And uh, it's also a uh, uh, connecting energy of attraction, okay? So if you breathe good feelings and if you are connected, you are breathing out good and connection feelings also. So and people will, for sure, people, good vibes, good energies, uh, abundance, uh, good energies, uh, uh, well, whatever, everything that's good will come out to you, okay? Because energies want to be stuck with something that is similar, okay? So if you are in a connection with yourself, all kinds of good energies want to be connected with yourself also. So, uh, and you will attract, you will attract other things. You will attract good opportunities, good people. And uh, why that somehow people say that, uh, I've, oh, I've, I, I hear people saying, oh, I, I attract bad people to me. Okay, or attract people that suck my blood, suck my energy. Okay, 
And people that attract this kind type of people is that not normally they are sucking their own energy, okay, to themselves, okay, because they are not they are not listening, okay. Sometimes people want to speak with God or with the universe or with the Mother Gaia, okay, but they are not listening to themselves. So, and somehow uh, these energies are speaking with ourselves in our gut, okay. So in, I think in America, you have a term that is thinking from your gut, okay? Yeah, um, the, the, the gut check, yes, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. You are not connected with it, okay? And they, that, that, and people don't say that for, for nothing, okay? You right. should be connected with your gut, okay? And you should yeah. listen to your body and your, your uh, energies, okay? And if, when you breathe, you get in contact with it. And, uh, he, he, and you, can, you get in contact with the energy of creation, okay? And then you can explode in having that connection with others. So that's, uh, that's what I'm learning every day uh, toward my breathing. I'm, I'm speaking now better English, although I'm, uh, it's not so good, but uh, it's much better now, okay? And, uh, and this confidence gives, gives more value to people also, to to have better relationships or better connection. I love the word connection because it's just all about connection. Well, and I think, you know, you brought up two words too, that um, one was the one you just did was confidence, right? And this is something, again, as writers, we want to have confidence. And, and so, what's really great about this breathing technique is, to your point, is I can do it in five minutes a day. I can find pockets of five minutes here and there to do that or even a minute. So we're not talking about oh my God, I have to spend 45 minutes or an hour and now I have oh, a breathing not, practice on top, right? You know? So it's not that, right? And it's not um, to your point, you know, you have to do it, right? It's a little bit every day, um, you know, and just using the different techniques. But the other you thing- You will be much do, more productive with that. Much exactly. More productive. If, if, if you exactly. Listen, but the other if thing was really Sorry. kind of- um, Go ahead. Yeah, no, what were you going to say? No, I was losing a little bit uh, of the video. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, but the other, the other word, too, that you had mentioned was really kind of knowing what you want to do, right, and, yeah. and, and having that focus. And I think what was so interesting as you were saying that was, you know, when we are not breathing properly, at least I know when I'm not breathing properly, I'm also not thinking straight. And I can't really, like, I don't really know what I want to do. And again, I think, you know, going back to all the stuff that we were talking about, right, you know, when I'm at the barn or I'm with a horse and I'm not breathing properly or I'm not in a good state, then I'm not in a good state mentally. And it's really hard for me to have a plan, right, to, to focus on what I'm doing. And I think that that confuses the horse, right? It goes back to that whole leadership thing, right? So, you know, just such a simple thing like your breath can really create this whole chain reaction, right? Sure. Yeah. So um, you have to give that, that opportunity to you to breathe. So that five minutes you were talking about, the people say, I'm, not, I'm losing five minutes. You're not losing, you're gaining five minutes because you are uh, gaining in, uh, you are winning in production, you are winning in energy, you are winning in health. So it's a win, win, win situation. So uh, uh, you are, uh, since I'm breathing more, my business uh, is much better, okay? So because I, I, I tend to be more uh, concentrated, okay? people talk a lot about concentration. You have to do mindfulness and you have to do this and to do that. But concentration is if when you start to do breathing, you start to do concentration also, okay? And you, you start to learn that uh, uh, how to be focused. Okay, and if you are fo more focused and more and better with better concentration, everything will run better. Even your business, your relationships in your home with your kids, you will be more organized. So it's it's a win-win uh, situation. So breathe, 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 breathe. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and you know, and here's the other point too, because even five minutes, right? So you talked about doing it in your car. You know, I've talked about it. 
right? Just being in the tack room. So you can do it while you're doing other things, right? So it's yeah, not again fun. this, oh, okay, I'm going to five minutes, right? So I think that's what's so great about it. I mean, that's what I found, you know, very, very helpful for me. Um, and you're right, it's not like, oh, I have to do this 30 minute meditation yeah. practice and be mindful and, you know, that kind of thing, right? Um, and yeah, I you also, have to see through that. <laughs> you do, yeah. I have to yeah. be mindful. I have to be mindful. Right, to be mindful. Right, yeah. And I, um, Yes, no. <laughs> but but the other thing is that um, I found really helpful is a lot of the techniques that you gave, especially the yawning and the oh, right, right. It's immediate, right? So and it's so easy to do, um, which which I really uh, you know has been super helpful to me. But uh, I wanted to pass this along to everybody else because I have noticed in the past three weeks like a massive difference in the relationship with my horse, and then also in in our riding, and I'm much more cognizant of my breath. Um, and harmonizing with her. And I'm yes. looking at you and you are glowing more. You are glowing. So. Yes, I'm very happy. Yes. <laughs> Your aura is bigger. So. Yeah. But there's also too like life benefit, right? So, you know, I started this podcast and just like, you know, you're with your business, you get nervous and yep. there's a lot of stress and, you know, but just like, right we just we're just good so flowing you are flowing you are flowing <laughs> yes finally so um what i wanted to pass along is so paolo does have a six-week class um if you're interested yeah. and it's at learn to breathe.com and it's all yes. you know it's it's digital right so if you're you're at home and you don't have anything to do um i strongly recommend doing this because um it's something you can do every day it has everyday benefits but also you know as we're trying to get back to the barn or whatever you'll see an impact with your horse. Um, so Paolo, I just want to close with one question. Um, I asked this now, you, you're not writing, but I'll ask in kind of terms of your breath training. So what was that aha moment that you had, you know, as you were doing this, this training? What, when, you know, what, what would you say your biggest aha moment and what your takeaway from that was? Uh, uh, with breathing. Yes, with you're breathing. asking with breathing. Uh, my leader with breathing was uh, my first. I had uh, I can two. I have two haha moments. Okay, one is spiritual. The other one is uh, connecting okay, with my sons. Okay? Because uh, I was uh, before starting to breathe better or to work on breath work. Okay, I was uh, always trying to be in control of everything, okay? even with my sons. Okay. And my relationship was a little bit of uh, alterity, okay? So uh, I, w uh, I was always being the bossy and not, uh, not because fathers have to be friends of their sons, but it's, I think that the relationship uh, should be much more than I, I, I demand you, you, you have to obey and something like that. So, uh, and I was uh, like um, my education, young, when I was young, my father was uh, one of my, it was my best friend, but when I was younger, he was a little bit tough with me, okay, so, uh, and I tend to learn to be tough with my kids, okay, and when the haha -ha moment is when you, you think that you, you, I, I don't have conversations with my sons because uh, uh, they don't have anything to, to make conversation with me, okay, something like that, and then you don't try to communicate with them, okay, you don't try to listen. So one of the ha-has is, uh, is the connection you, to listen more, okay? You start to, to learn that you have one mouth and two ears, okay? And two ears for listening and the one mouth for, for, uh, for talking. But somehow the nature is to have two ears for listening. So you should learn how to hear more and talk less, okay? And when you, this connection that breathing uh, gave me, it was uh, every day I'm more connected and more connect, having more connection with my son. So, uh, and I'm divorced, so uh, I'm not every day with them. But uh, I'm more connected with them when I do some video calls or with some phone calls. But especially, of course, when I win, when them, I'm really, uh, even if I'm one hour, half an hour, I'm really with them. And that's the ha ha moment because you, that, that's all about concentration, okay? So you focus and you are there and you are living in the present moment with them, okay? Feeling their energy, feeling what they want, feeling their joy, okay? It's all about happiness and joy. And, uh, and you learn so much with breathing. This is the, 
if I have some ha ha thing is for you, it's my connection that changed completely my connection with my sons. Okay, uh, with my ex-wife also, but uh, especially with my sons. Uh, the other one was spiritual, but it was uh, like um, I think that I, uh, I, it happened to me in Romania with Denbrule. Uh It was on a reversing technique session. Uh, I had very strange thing that was like um, Dan Brule was talking and after a breathing session I, uh, the, the lights gone off and I started to, to hear Dan Brule on the other room and everyone was uh, dark and I said someone closed the, the lights but he was talking normally everyone was talking normally so uh, and all of a sudden uh, I see lights everywhere Okay, and the the lights were from the people who were on my side. They were shining. Okay, uh, they were like uh, glowing sh light. Okay, and the uh, and I was hearing then on the other room, and I was like that like five minutes like that, uh, uh, and it was a very ha ha big moment for me. Wow, uh, wow! <laughs> it was very spiritual uh, situation for me. Uh, Breathing is spiritual, even if you are not, I'm a businessman, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, so uh, I'm very septic, and, uh, very objective, uh, mind earth, is, uh, earth uh, thinking, but uh, when you start to do breathing, you don't have uh, how not to be spiritual, because you are, uh, you are start that connection, and I talk a lot in this video, it gives you connection with everything and you start to really feel uh, that life is much more than what you see okay and uh, and when you give, give it yourself a chance to have more experience with breathing you get you get uh, for sure you're going you're going to have that uh, clear uh, you know, that uh, psychedelic experiences or out of body experience or whatever but uh, but most, mostly is you're going to have uh, most joy in life, more, uh, much more uh, deepness in life than just uh, the things that we see. So you, you, will, get, get, you will have much more, uh, uh, I was trying to not use word connection again, but uh, yes, uh, it's, it's all about connection, so. Yeah. So and I and I think that's, you know, that's so great, right? Because we get the connection with our horses, we get the joy from being, you know, in life, but also being with our horses and, yeah. and being in that connection. So and I, I love horses. It's for me, it's the, it's, it's my favorite animal. So uh, I was in Brazil, uh, one of my uh, family uh, over there has a big farm, Hacienda. He, he worked with, uh, uh, how do you call it? Not, uh, with horses, but uh, he treats the horses, but uh, they are like savage, uh, not savage. What is the word in English? Oh, the, the, the feral, the feral horses, like yeah, like, yes. like oh yeah, okay, yeah. So uh, uh, and uh, I've learned a little bit of horses with him. I was mounting also, I was riding, mm -hmm. and it was uh, that was also an out of body experience. So <laughs> it was crazy, but I I love horses. Horses are so. Um, yeah, so uh, intelligent animals and such uh, spiritual animals also. So it's it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, Paolo, thank you so much for joining us. This is really, really helpful. Um, and, and hopefully for everybody else who's watching, this will be super helpful for you. And just a reminder too, if you're interested in learning more from Paolo, um, if you want to go to learntobreathe.com, he has a lot of great video and blogs and information more about him, but uh, go ahead and, and check that out. So Paolo, thank you and have thank a great you. rest of the day. Really appreciate See it. See ya. Thank you. Yes.